Hi, everyone. Um, I thought I would come on again and make another video today because, well, just because there's no because for it. I don't know why I say because, because there's never no because. I just thought I would come, but look at this beautiful doily. Isn't this a beautiful doily? And so um, it is just beautiful. And so it's got all these pretty flowers. Now, some people just take doilies all apart and just use individual parts, which I could do that if I so chose. But I, somebody took all the time to put this together. I just don't have the time. I mean, I don't have the heart to take it apart. I mean, each one of these little flowers. But I have for this thing that I do now, uh, because I don't do anything that, real people, you know, normal, sane people. I don't do anything like they do. I just do different things, you know. And so what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to show you right here. This here, I have this piece of fleece. I don't know how big it is, but it's pretty big. It's just a piece of blue fleece. And, um, I don't know. I wonder how big this is. Let me check. It is, let me see, this thing's 36 inches right here. So 36, where's the end of that? Okay, 36, 46, 56, about 60 inches one way, and then it's about, and it's about 36 inches the other way. But this is what I've been doing on here. It doesn't make no sense. So, if you only want to do things that make sense, then then you need the wrong you're the wrong house. See what I'm doing on one side? You know, I oftentimes just do something for no reason. I'll just like um like this this piece right here. I did for no reason. I wanted to play with a few things. I did that on that piece. And then on that piece, I did something else for no reason. This here was on a stolen, this was a stolen washcloth from from Savannah, Georgia. Some, some place up there in Savannah, Georgia, where my daughter went. I told her to steal me a wash wagon, so she did. She's a very obedient daughter. Brought me back that wash rag. I fixed that up. And then like this here guy, I feel like a chicken playing a guitar to this little baby, to her baby there. And um, I painted her. And then I did some stitching just around. That's beautiful. This here was just a piece that I, I was weaving just because I wanted to weave some. That's on there. This is a piece here that's just, um, it's a bunch of flannel pieces that I just quilted them together and made like a quilt square. And got some rickrack on there and some trim. That's just that. This was a piece I made, I think I made this online right here. And it's just a bunch of stuff, you know. I got a lot of couching on there and a lot of these fluffy things on there. There's some buttons and some beads, and that's on that piece. And then, then this piece, I, this heart right here came from, came from Janet Nash over there in the UK. She sent that heart to me. I put that on there. And then I have just awesome, just stuff. I just, I want, you know, I'm one that says, I wonder what that'll look like after I do that. And so I just wondered, and I put it there. And then here's another square. This here square has got um, yo-yos and buttons and lace and applique and sequins. Oh, no, those are beads. Uh-oh. It's coming loose. i got to fix that. Some more yo-yos and applique and buttons. A lot of stitching is on there. And, um... And so I got that on there. And then like this piece here, I just wanted to put a whole bunch of just solid colors. And I so I put the solid colors together on there. And then I just kind of stitched them on. And they're there. And then this was 
oh, I had put three pieces together, and then I took this here piece of fuzzy stuff. Yeah, this here was a slashed piece, and then this here piece was a, a leader or an ender, and then just a circle of fabric, and then a um, button flower. Somebody made me that, and then buttons. And, oh, I put this on with with like little beads. They're kind of hidden inside there, and they're looking really nice in there. And, and my... And my plan is to just cover up this whole entire piece of fleece with different things. Now, see, like there is a blue down here. When I get finished with this, I'm not going to have any blue showing. So, like this right down here, I'll probably take a piece of a... Uh, Hang on just a second. I gotta hang on just a second. I gotta put this on pause a minute. Oh, there I am. I thought I lost myself. Okay. But anyhow, um, like like on these, like a strip down here that has nothing on it. See, sometimes just for giggles, I, I'll make just a strip like this out of, of, of just patchwork, just patches and scraps. And see, I can cut a piece off of that and put that right down that center there. See, so that's how I'll fill in spots that are blue. But then, like, let's see what else I have on here. I mean, the whole thing, it just makes no sense whatsoever. Now here, I started crocheting something. I was just trying something. and I crocheted that piece, and then, well, I thought, well, no, that's not going to work for what I thought it was going to do. And so I just put that on there. And this was just a placemat. I just put it on there, see? And this here was a doily. I just stitched that doily. Again, I didn't want to cut it apart because it's so pretty. And so I just stitched that doily on there just now while I was watching. I was playing bingo with Kathy in um, <laughs> like a tic-tac-toe board. But, and, and so I was stitching this on here while I was doing that. And um, see how like then... If I put a strip in between the two, or if I put, I might end up putting strips, making these kind of strips all along the edge. I think that would be cool too. So the inside will be just the fleece, you know, so it'd be soft on your body. This is a good, you know, a, a recliner size blanket. Now that me and Papa are in a recliner age, we like stuff like that. And so this is a recliner size blanket that you can just cover from your toes to your nose, you know. And that's that's on there. And um and then like here's a piece that's that's a pretty good size still piece of blue right there. But then I have this here. See, this was a square I worked on some time ago, and I just put a punch of pieces of fabric on there and then I stitched them on there and made this little train and its wheels and then I got some beads all the way those little um like tube beads I got that all on there and some stitching and so but you know I can take a piece like this and even though it doesn't fit like perfectly I could put this like right here It'll cover up some of that doily, but uh, look at this too. See my necklace? It's got all this stuff on it, but see right here on the string of it, which is just a shoelace? I got safety pins on there. That way I don't lose them. So I can take a safety pin, and I can put that right here. And that's what I'll do. Is I'll, it, I won't put it on with a pin, a straight pin, because I'll poke myself, and that's 
but dangerous. So I'll just take my safety pins here that I just keep hanging around my neck. You know, geez, I'm telling you, I gotta do whatever works. And see, now I like I like that right there. So and that really doesn't cover up a whole lot. You know, I might not want to cover that so much. Let me move this over just a bit. You know, move her, move it over. Because see, this here little piece right here is a piece of slashing. And I kind of like that there. So I'll have to move that over just a tad. And I'll repin that. But that'll hold that there till I get stitched. I'll just stitch it on by hand. I just got a needle and thread. And, you know, I'll put on something on the computer that's, like, right in front of me, my laptop. It ain't worth whole much, but it does what I need it to do. So, it's slow as molasses in January, but it does what I need it to do. So, it's all good. And so, but you know what I've been putting on lately? I've been watching. Oh, my gosh. It just does my heart so good. There is a channel that's called Goodness in People. There's a gentleman that does that channel. He's retired. And he goes around, and I think he's in Tucson, Arizona area. And he goes around and he helps the homeless. I mean, he, you know, he, well, I shouldn't say homeless because that is their home. Their home is wherever they pitch their tent. That's their home. So they're just kind of houseless is what they are. And so, but this man, he'll go every day to the store and buy all kind of food. This man, had, in the videos that I've watched, he has taken, um, the one I just watched, he was moving. He was helping a gentleman move from the space he was in to another space he found that he would be more comfortable in. And so then this gentleman, the, 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 the helper person, the good guy, well, I shouldn't say that because then that makes it sound like the other guy's a bad guy, but he's not. The, the houseless person needed help moving his stuff. So then the helper dude, he helped him pack his stuff up and move it over to his new place for him. And, um, I and and then he he gives out food. He gives out. He'll buy um, sleeping bags. He'll buy. He'll say, "What do you need? What do you need? I'll go get it for you." Well, this older gentleman that was relocating, he because he was relocating into a place that was um, kind of a lot of a lot of weeds and stuff. He um, he wanted something that he could help get the weeds down with. And so um, so then the helper gentleman, I guess I haven't caught his first name. I have, I know, I've, I know he's said it, but, um, but the helper gentleman went and bought him like a shovel, bought him a machete, told him, don't you be using this machete where you ain't supposed to be using it. The older gentleman says, nope, I'm just going to clear my area here. And bought him something else. Oh, he wanted a lantern, like a flashlight. So the man bought a flashlight and, and some batteries for him, brought them back to him. And um, sometimes he'll buy him a pack of smokes and stuff like that. It's just, he's amazing. He's got a, a GoFundMe channel where people fund what he's doing. I don't know how long he's been doing this, but he is out there every day, and he makes sure that people have water. He's always got a lot of bottled water. He said, he well, he's been doing it long enough that people, like neighbors and people in the area know where he lives, and, and they'll just drop stuff off, like cases of water and stuff, because they know that this gentleman is going to be passing that out to these houseless people. And, um, and I think it's just pretty near awesome. It's just, I've been watching, I've watched about 10 or 12 of his videos now. And sometimes, and, and it's amazing. 
what he does for that. He will take, he will take people shopping. You know, they'll he'll say, "Come on, just load up in my car, and we'll go shopping." And I mean, he'll go like to the Dollar Tree and stuff. But you know, he does what he can do, what whatever money he's got, and all the money he's got is, you know, donations that he works on. But he's on the road every day. Sometimes the the um, the houseless person will say, well, I need this and that and the other. And and the man will say, well, I don't have that in my car right now, but I'll be back tomorrow with it. And he will be back tomorrow with it. And he's got, you know, a lady needs. He's got, you know, hygiene things, socks, hats, gloves. He just gives out everything. Okay, now. See, now I took this doily, and I'll put it right here. It's overlapping on this here, um, on this here, um, placemat. But see, otherwise I got this whole big piece of placemat there. And this here, now I can still see the placemat here. I can still see it through the doily, but I have not, I have not wrecked this doily to do it with. And so, and, and when I'm finished with this, this whole thing will be covered with different things that I've done or, or some pieces that I've even gotten some quilt squares and stuff from other people have sent me things. And well, this is something I can do to get them all used into something. And so this is not something that everybody would like, but um, if I was to give this to a homeless person, <gasps> a houseless person, I don't want to say homeless, I gotta get used to that. Um, if I was to say, here, I have you a blanket, wouldn't that be happiness? I mean, it's just not, it's definitely not boring. But see, now I got it safety pinned all the way around there. And I have this piece safety pinned right here. And then, so I'm going to stitch, and look here, I might find something even to go right in here. And if I don't find some, I could even take a small piece of this, like this. Because I got more of this stuff. Because I was on a roll with this at one time. Just making these strips. For no reason. But see, there must be the reason. Because I can put a piece of that right there. And then that would cover up that blue right there. And does it match? Well, it does. Yeah. It does match. So, yeah. So, I think there's going to be a lot of this type of stuff put into the center's. I mean, into the, the spaces. But this this is just what I'm doing. This is this is just what I'm doing. And I can I can put this right here like this. And I can just start and what I'll do is I'll stitch right now. See with the safety pins holding it sort of there, because sometimes it wants to squiggle squaggle when you're sewing. And so with it safety pins every little ways, then I know I can keep all that pretty much right there while I'm stitching. So I'm just going to get me a piece of thread here. And um, we, we had some rain today. And Papa come in here and he told me, have you seen the yard? And I said, well, no, I haven't seen the yard. I've been sitting here flattening my bum. And he says, well, you just got to go look out that door. And so I went and looked out the garage door. Well, we don't have a garage, but we got a garage door. But um, that whole side yard was full of, it was just flooding. It was like so much water. I mean, it sinks in fast, you know, because we got so much sand. But, um, but yeah, and oh, my goodness. And it had, when I went, went out there to look, I mean, it still thundered and raining and stuff. You don't hear nothing inside this house. This house is like a, 
like Fort Knox. It's you do not hear rain or weather outside of this house. I mean, people. Um, I've seen some like videos and people are ouch trying to do something, and um, they say excuse the mowing outside. Well, here, gosh, you could be mowing right there on the edge of the house and. I don't hear it inside. Maybe I'm just going deep. I don't know. I could just be going deep. And so, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sew this whole edge. And I'll just, I'll put me on something and watch it. Put me on a little video or something. And I'll watch it. I'll probably, that guy, what did I call it? Goodness in People is the name of this channel that I'm watching. And I mean, if you want to see a feel good, I know some people are totally um, put off by people without houses to live in, but I'm not, I am not, absolutely not put off by these kind of people, these kind of people are so wonderful, and, um, and, and, and we haven't walked in their shoes, we do not know why they're out there, and, um, and this guy doesn't, he doesn't concern himself why the people are out there. The people are out there. And so he just, he just, out. he just goes right along and helps them, gets them some food, gets them whatever they need, whatever they need. And so I just think it's great. I, I just, you know, I just love him. I just love him. I just love him. He doesn't ask him any personal questions. He's not doing anything that would be like for religious reasons and or nothing. He just takes them as they are and he does what he can to help them. And he does it, the kindness of other people help him by donating. And you can see by what he passes out to these people, you can see that he, um, he, He's doing it because he loves people. He just loves people. He loves life. He's just amazing. So check his channel out. Watch a couple of his videos. And um, I, I just feel like the people without houses to live in, um, sometimes they are, they are not accepted right and nicely. They need to be accepted nicely you know and one of the things he said is written on each one of his videos let me see i wrote it down because i love quotes where did i write that um i wrote that goodness in people so i wouldn't forget he right he's on each one of his videos let me see where did i write that one of them is no one is gets or no one has ever become poor by giving. That is one of his quotes that's in all his videos. And then he's got another quote that's in all his videos says, the things we take for granted are things some people are praying for. And man, that is so true. That is so true. And so, and so, you know, you know, we take things for granted. We take that we can walk to the sink and pour us a glass of water. We can, um, we we can if we got need a shower, we just go take a shower. We can take two or three showers in a day's time, and we can wash our clothes. And you know the, and and we can get out of the weather. You know, we take these things for granted, and and it's important. You know. These things are like, you know, even the people that do have a tent to live in, you know, that is their home. They're not homeless. They have a tent to live in. But if a bad storm comes up, well, then, um, then, then, um, you know, you're pretty much, you really start praying then, you know, that you just don't lose your whole home. Now, I haven't seen this man go to places like Skid Row and that kind of thing where there's just thousands of people living on a square blocks area. He's in, he's like I say, Tucson, Arizona, and um, 
and it's um and I think that's pretty much where he stays is just around his home and takes care of community you know that's his community he and oh my gosh he calls them his friends and um he talks to them with so much respect I love this man I'm telling you this man is amazing and so um but for somebody to do that day after he doesn't take a day off he does that every 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 day and so most everybody that he brings things to are people that are like this older gentleman that he just helped relocate i don't know he must be in his 70s could be even 80 and um the gen older gentleman and um and but he's by himself out there in the woods. You know, he's got a little spot he found. He said, oh, this will work. And so there he is, you know, and that's where he's living. He's they, um, I think when you find the, some of the campsites, like I know Skid Row, I've watched a lot of Skid Row too. And, um, and there you're going to find a lot of, a, almost a different, breed of the houseless people and they're kind of some of them are kind of hard to help but because they want things that really well well a lot of them are on drugs not all of them on drugs and i shouldn't say and and i and i also don't say um that they're on that's why they're homeless is because they're on drugs i won't say that either but i would say that maybe some of them became addicted to drugs because of being without a home to live in a house to live in and so um and maybe you know the the sad thing too is places like that in skid row there is a lot of drug dealers that aren't on drugs themselves they're just dealers and they will go get people They'll go get people and, you know, offer them a free sample. And then with that free sample, they're, um, they've got them addicted that quickly. And so, you know, so it's a whole different. And what I see here in Tucson where this guy is, um, it, I don't see groups of homeless people. I might see there might be like... Um, a few families that are just a short distance away from each other but they're not like all crammed in like on skid row if you've ever watched anything about skid row and um i mean it's all is sad is sad can be because i seen even on skid row one time i was watching because i i watched these I watch these things. I watch these things, and it really, you watch these things, and it really gives you, you, you become very grateful for everything that you have. Um, so grateful that you become so grateful. And, um, but I was watching one, and it was a family that was without a place to live. And, now see, I've stitched all the way from here, went all the way around, and got to here already. So I've got pretty much of that already stitched. But this, the gentleman, the father of the family, he worked at, for UPS. He drove a UPS truck for a living. But, but his paychecks would, he would need to, his paychecks to support the family that was living there and he wasn't right on skid row he was like like out in the um on the outskirts of it and and um he was making you know when he'd get a paycheck well then he needed to get the things that his family needed you know food and and clothing and whatever the kids needed for school and whatnot and so, and to rent a place, then um, you need like first month's rent, last month's rent and security. Then you need money to turn on the deposit for the water, deposit for the lights. 
and all that kind of thing. So without having that, you can get, I mean, you, you, you have no chance, you know, um, I mean, you can save a little bit from payday, payday to payday, but boy, it's rough. It's hard. And there is, there is, um, money. There's government money that is allotted for the homeless. There's government money, but sometimes that government money isn't spent correctly. I could get me a drink here. Give me a drink. So for um, so if if X amount of money is is now um, earmarked for homeless in the town of East Duwadidi. Well, then first in East Duwadidi, they got to take that money and they build a building because they need office. So they have to build a building. Then they have to hire the people that will work and um, work for these, this finding homes for the people. It's almost like a real estate thing or something. I don't know. But um, by the time they do all of that, well, then there's no money left for the actual homeless people. I seen one place I watched one time when when all of the homeless people, the or the houseless people, were living in tents and they were living, they were ever one veterans, ever one veterans. And they were just lined up on the sidewalk in their tents. And they were near the Veterans Administration building of some sort. And and it was really a well-taken-care-of area. And because if you were not, I mean, only veterans were there. But if you weren't, if you were causing a rupus or making a big mess or anything, well, then you, you couldn't stay there anymore. You had to mind your manners there, you know, because, but they were trying to make it, make their point too, you know, that these veterans need to be taken care of. But really when you um, go down that road, and I don't know what the name of the road was, you will see every place where there's a campsite, you will see an American flag. And, um, but then they have, you know, uh, public meeting places in the area, you know, that maybe they'll do breakfasts or something, you know, for them. And, or maybe a little church service or prayer service or something. And so there is some very well um, taken care of uh, little communities for these people without houses. And, um, and... And, and like they say, especially the veterans, they should be taken. There should not be a veteran on the ground. There shouldn't. They should all have a soft bed and a roof over their heads, even if it's nothing but an old room. And, and you know, in this country, there is so many places like hospitals that are closed up. There's, um, there's um, malls, you know, shopping malls that are closed up. And they got a roof on them. Like a shopping mall has these bathrooms that are huge, you know. But a hospital, can you imagine if there if there was a hospital and it was fixed up into rooms just for veterans? And that's their home. Because when you have a hospital room, it's got a bathroom right there in it. And got a bathtub or a shower right there in it. And... And, and there has already been very many people that have offered to even volunteer to help. Like, so if there was a place like that, that they could, I am sure a lot of volunteers would say, yes, I will absolutely volunteer for this cause, you know, and I believe that because there are more good people in this world than bad. There are many people with homes than without. Many more people with homes than without. 
And um, and I think that if they could do something like that and then ask, you know, for volunteerism to help run these places, that that would be amazing. Now, see here, I'm getting this. I'm going right on around with this. And all I have to do, I'll probably stitch a little bit on the inside, too, just to make it so it's... Um, so it'll be nice and and um, and and secure on there, but you know, like like you know, like a crazy quilt is just a crazy quilt, you know, and it's just crazy. And I like crazy quilts. Crazy quilts is my favorite kind of quilt ever, ever. But I make mine. Mine are more. Uh, my quilts are more of an insane quilt, you know. It's done past craziness, and um, and and this isn't even a quilt. This is a blanket of stuff. This is a blanket of memories. Well, like I, what I was telling you, you know, I was doing this here. This one piece came from a uh, stolen from Savannah, Georgia. Sorry if you're in Savannah, Georgia, and you own a motel. It was probably yours, and this. Mush rags probably stolen from you guys, but I'm sorry. And um, but I'm taking good care of it. It's 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 turned into an art project. So if you're the owner, if you were the owner of this, um, yeah, I guess I could go turn myself in. But I'm not going to do that. I don't know if I've ever told you about my husband's. He needs to be turned in too. He need. I told him lately. You need to go and turn yourself in. I don't know if I told you the cherry bomb story, but I might have. But, um, yeah, he wasn't the most well-behaved kid in high school. He's now the most well-behaved. Well, well, he now sort of is the most well-behaved person at age 77. But, um, is he 77 and a half yet? Oh, no, he won't be 77 and a half till August. So, um. I notice now that even on the um, in the greeting card section at the grocery stores or at the stores, they have um, half birthday cards. Happy birthday on your half birthday or whatever, you know. Yeah, that's it. Gotta sell them cards, you know. Okay, see, I'm almost done with that piece of thread now on there. So I don't know if you want to be bored is to be watching me stitch this all the way around. I got it, well, not quite half of it on there, but I'll get it, half of it. I'm going to watch some more of the goodness in people. I just, you know, I watch it, and I'm just, for one thing, it makes you grateful for what you have. Grateful for what you have. It also gives you, um, oh, what is it, you will, reasons to pray? Is that, do you have to have a reason to pray? No, but, um. Grateful for the the people that are helping other people, and there is so many. When you think about all the food banks and stuff, people helping people, it's just absolutely amazing. And um, and this man to just give of his time, and maybe all of his um, expenditures are taken care of with these with this funding that he gets. Maybe, but he's still his time. That's a lot of time. He could be golfing or something, you know, since he's retired. Okay, so now I finished that little piece of thread. So I need more thread. Well, I'm going to, yeah, I think I am about halfway. That is about halfway down around. And then I'll get the rest of this done. And you never know. I might put even something right in the middle because I've got like this one this one little bag I was keeping some special. See, uh, some of my little pieces are like it's, it's extremely special. This one was sent to me. It's like Cordula made this, sent that to me. I might stitch that right in the middle there. Just, uh, that might go in there. And then like this here little piece of mushroomy fabric. I've used some of this up already. But my friend, um, what is her name? Um, oh gosh, I know her name as well as I know my own. 
and she sent me this piece of mushroom fabric and I've used it on stuff well I might just cut a, a just a little piece of that mushroom out and I might just find a place for it to go gosh I wish that name would come to me but then I have some you know I have some like um like oh some of this is just amazing like like this look at this piece of fabric and sometimes just a pretty piece like this and it's just so this is like a maybe like a sari silk i don't know oh i wonder if i have a piece of that um this is just an ender oh this here piece of fabric i'm going to be using this real soon as soon as i get my um soon as i'm waiting for my it's like a little square loom because I gotta, I'm gonna be putting this on there. That's a pretty big piece. So I put, oh, it's got a hole in the middle. Well, that's okay if it'd be big enough. But you pull this tight, this kind of fabric, tight on it. And that's what we do this. Um, well, I say we, I haven't done one stitch of it yet. But this here, I showed this on my earlier little tambour beading tambour beading which if you can see right there on the corner of this book or you can see some of this beading is done here you can see the beading is done on a corner of a um of a garment this frog is all done with beading and um the book though is all just black and white pictures and a lot of them are are um are a lot of them are kind of hard to see but i like the book anyway this is my tambour needle and um so i got that ready and but this is the type of fabric that you do this stuff on because you can see right through it because when you're doing it you're going to have your hand underneath the fabric holding your threads and then you're going to have your hand above the fabric with the needle I've watched plenty of videos to make me an expert, and um, which I know I won't be an expert, but this, and I forget what this is called, but if I get this going good, I'll get me some more of this fabric. But I got a pretty good sized piece there right over, right already. And I don't know, I thought I had a piece here that had some, oh, here. See, like this. Do you see this piece? A fabric right here this here Pete I could put that maybe one down one of my strips this here is tam tambour embroidery right there where you see those sequins on there now when you put the sequins on you're working from this uh, this this will be at the bottom and this is where you're going to be working from the top. That's why you need to have something that you can see through so that you can um, so that you can see what you're doing. But and this one is all done with metallic thread. I don't have any metallic thread yet, but I can get some. And um, I'm sure Amazon has some. But see how them sequins are put on there right there? Those are put on with that tambour type of embroidery. And like here, this is like cut work in here. So this is done. They've cut that hole in there. And then they went on through with the threads. Now this, this here, it, that probably would be a little bit more work to try to um, figure something like that but I know I'm going to have no problem because it's basically a chain you're doing a chain stitch so you need a little spindle to put your thread on because you're just constant from the thread and so but I'll find something that I can use for a spindle and um, and I'm I'm looking so far but because I'm waiting on my um my little frame it, and no it's not going to be i'm not expecting much with the frame because it was only like seven dollars 
eight dollars, seven something. And so when I get that frame, I've got the needle and I've got thread and I've got sequins and beads. I'm going to be playing with that. So I'm going to show you guys when I get it. I'm going to get started on a piece. And um, I think that's the only one I had in here that actually had some of that on it. Oh, actually, this piece, too. This had something glued to the back. I pulled it off because it was real stiff, and then I pulled this off. You know, this might be the tambro as well. Because it looks like it's just a steady chain, steady chain. Yeah, I believe this is. I believe this is, too. Because it's a steady chain. You're just constantly chain stitching. And so, yeah, I believe that is too. I believe that's a lot of the Tambro embroidery, which is done. And I don't think this can be done by machine. It might be able to be done by machine, but I don't know for sure. Because I don't know everything. Sometimes I try to come across as knowing everything there is to know. But yeah, in there I got some dyed fabrics that I got from Alicia in there. Stamped fabrics that I got from Cordula in there. And some more dyed fabrics. I think this one actually, oh, I tend to forget who sends what. Because Cordula sent me some dyed fabrics, too. Look at this one. This is nice. And this here, even, I bet I could see through that enough to be even to be able. This is a very loose weave, this fabric. So much you can do with a fabric that's got very loose weave like that. Let's see. I got, and this is my. One special bag that I have just some special, special things in there. Oh, I'm going to keep this out. Well, no, I won't. I might lose it before I get to stitching it. But I'm going to put it right there at the top where I um, I won't lose that. And Because I want to probably put that on. I'm going to get these two stitch, this stitched on, and then that other one I pinned. I'm going to get that stitched on with the train here. And, and then what I'll have to do is like have Papa hold it up when, when I'm finished. And then I can just use my camera and I can kind of videotape what the whole thing looks like. But it's going to be just a mishmash of everything. But see, and, and still there's some of the stuff I can go over. Like, I can overlap this with something. Oh, and I wouldn't overlap the whole thing. I would put maybe a square of something right here, and it'll overlap a part of it. And I might could even overlap like this, put something over here and overlap. And um, I might go on this to hold that fringe down, and I might do some stitching across here. Maybe I'll even stitch some beads across there. And because there's no rules for this one, there's just nothing. No rules of nothing. So, but this is what I do, you guys. This is what I do. I do a whole lot of nothing. And then I come up with something. And you don't have to even look for directions. You just do it. You don't look for directions. Just do it. I'm telling you, I don't want to learn any new thing. Yes, I do. But I seen this. I just accidentally saw this somewhere. And that quickly, I said, I have got to do that. So I ordered my, my, my hook. The book was only $6 and something, maybe $7. The book was very inexpensive. But it is written. I love the way this is written. For one thing, it's got large print. But it explains so much about this. Who wrote this? I wonder who. 
last year. They don't even give us a who wrote it. No who done it. Nope. Doesn't even tell us who wrote it. Isn't that weird? Made in the United States, Orlando, Florida. June 17, 2022. That was my brother's birthday, June 17, 2020. Oh, that's weird. So it, but anyhow, it doesn't say who wrote the book. But it's a, it's, it, I think it's a very good starter. Like it says, for beginners, classic art of India embroidery. So I'm going to be doing that. I have the weirdest videos, don't I, you guys? Just the weirdest videos. I'm going to read. What should I read? I'm going to read something out of here. Oh, look at there. I drew in the book. I was drawing the bluebells. Let's open it to right here. Daily thoughts for daily needs. Okay, wait a minute. I'm going to get spectacles here. Daily thoughts for... Oh, Helen Siner Rice wrote this one. And um, now see, and we were just talking about daily needs, and uh, with that, or we, I say we were, you, you might have been listening, I was doing all the talking, and, um, and, um, but we were just talking about this man who brings daily needs to these people, and he will go to the same people every day sometimes, but anyway, daily thoughts for daily needs, if we are if we put our problems in God's hand, there is nothing we need understand. It is enough to just believe that we need, we will receive. Life is a mixture of sunshine and rain, teardrops and laughter, pleasure and pain. We can't have all bright days, but it's certainly true. There was never a cloud that the sun didn't shine through. The more, the more you love, the more you'll find that life is good and friends are kind. For only what we give away enriches us from day to day. Yes, yes, yes. Often we stand at life's crossroads and view what we think is the end. But God has a much bigger vision and he tells us it's only a bend. Everything is by comparison, both the bitter and the sweet, and it takes a bit of both of them to make our life complete. Oh, make us more aware, dear God, of little daily graces that come to us with sweet surprise from never-dreamed-of places. You can't pluck a rose all fragrant with dew, without part of the fragrance, me remaining on you. God never sends the winter without the joy of spring. And through, and though today your heart, heart may cry, tomorrow it will sing. And that was written by Helen Steiner Rice. I love that woman. I'm telling you, she has wrote some of the most awesome things. And this is not a Helen Steiner Rice books. This is the Keepsakes for the Salzman Collection. But it said, used with permission of the Helen Steiner Rice Foundation. So it is, they had permission to print that in. Isn't that funny how when I open a book and just open it to wherever. I read that one earlier today. Um... It, it usually when I open it, it opens it to something that really melds right in with the day or with what thoughts I have today. And it's, it's amazing. I love my books, uh, and especially these kind of things like this. They're just beautiful. And so, okay, um, with that, I ask God to watch over you every step you take and every move you make. Keep you safe and keep you safe. I said that already. Keep you safe and keep you happy and keep you healthy and keep you humble. I never remember all them words. I write them down because they're safe and secure and whatever. 
you know, sometimes I have different words, but I want I want everything good for you, and I want you to know that God watches over you even when you don't think He is. You know, that footprint. That foot. One day I'm going to read that footprint. I gotta go take it off the wall so I can read it because I don't know it by heart. But um, I have to read that because I love that footprint poem. But anyhow, like, well, like I say, goodness in people. If you just looking for something to watch, that it's just amazing. It's like almost like a bittersweet kind of a thing. And so I ask God to watch over you. And um, I'm gonna hang up the phone now. And um, as soon as I find my, how come I always lose my mouse? I'm gonna stitch some more. I'm gonna watch some more of that dude. And then when I find my mouse, no. Nope. It was in the floor. Got it. Okay. God bless and keep you all.